very difficult under uh, difficult uh, economic situations. So uh, we need powerful images. We need the participation of artists, of uh, uh, scientists, yes, but, but people that is well aware with, with art to come up with images that will help governments of the world come up with uh, new agreements, uh, new uh, treaties that will address the global challenges that we are uh, facing. Any final questions? Okay, Andrew, I swear this is the last one. So, Marco, one of your last slides, um, you talked about the uh, HFCs as the uh, next generation of um, these gases that we need to be concerned about, mostly because of their uh, warming potential. Looking down the road, um, if you could look down the horizon, if developing countries were to leapfrog that, what is the next thing if we don't use the HFCs? What, what is the next thing that, uh, that you guys are looking at as the replacement then? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, there are many, many countries that are, um, and thanks for using that word, leapfrog, I think is extremely important. Many countries under the, um, uh, working with the implementing agencies are opting to leapfrog the use of HFCs. Um, because, because they are concerned about uh, their future. What is going to happen in 10 years from now or uh, whether the problems with climate change get worse and then uh, they will be forced immediately to uh, halt or in their use. So many countries are opting to use alternatives and other uh, options that are uh, available now. Um, I was talking to the Minister of your Minister of Environment here and to the principal um, uh, of the university. Uh, about the potential that a country like Trinidad and Tobago has uh, because of your production of good uh, is it, uh, butane, good quality butane. Um, and one of the options is uh, natural refrigerants like butane and, and others that are being uh, used intensively in, in other latitudes. So there are many alternatives and this uh, issue of leapfrogging the use of HFCs is being recognized under the multilateral fund with a premium of 25% additional uh, uh, finance uh, to uh, projects that choose to use, uh, not to use HFCs or, 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 or choose to use uh, energy efficiency um, alternatives. Um, so there are many, many alternatives, and I, but I just mentioned one that, that is uh, related to the possibilities that you have here in, in Trinidad and Tobago to develop your own alternatives. Thank you. Okay, if there are no further questions, I'd like to invite Ms. Arti Dupree up to um, give a vote of thanks. Uh, good evening, good night, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you for this opportunity to give vote of thanks. Uh, um, I see a lot of my colleagues here that we have been working with over the last few days, and so thank you for for also staying with us uh, for the next few hours. And I, I would reflect that those are students up in, at the top there, and I, I do hope that this session uh, with uh, Mr. Marco Gonzalez uh, would be useful for you and also with the challenge that he has given us in the continuation of the work amidst the successes that we have achieved. So Mr. Marco Gonzalez, thank you very, very much. And, and thank you, uh, and to give the story, I was in a meeting with Mr. Man Marco Gonzalez in Montreal and what we call one of these corridor conversation. And uh, I asked him and uh, he accepted 
And I'm, I'm certain at that point he did not realize what he was saying yes to. So <laughs> thank you so much uh, for, for accepting to be here with us and for accepting to give us this session. And as you present uh, your, your work and the work of the Montreal Protocol, I think all of us here who are working, in the fa uh, working as family and, and, and as experts in the field, I think it gives us a point of reflection and for us to go back in our years and, and maybe issues that we, we cross over and take for granted. But I think when you look at the presentation, it really reminds us on how important our work is and uh, to, to go back to the basic tools that, that build the Montreal Protocol and uh, as one of the challenge raised, of course, to continue using these tools to educate and to sensitize our public and, of course, in all of this, what we are doing for the next generation. So thank you again, Mr. Michael Gonzalez. Truly a pleasure. I would also like to, to inform you that uh, the videotape that has been done will be posted on the web pages of UNEP, the university, and the government. And of course, if you, any one of you want copies, we'll be happy to make them available to you. Uh, I would also like to thank the ministry for readily accepting to, to work with us to have this and have this event. Uh, it's truly a pleasure and, uh, and, and, and it's a joy that we can have such high level of cooperation for the University of the West Indies, Professor Egard, Professor Lawrence, uh, forgive me if I don't get all the names, but it's really a team effort to be able to, um, to pull this event together and to deliver to you. So thank you, University of the West Indies, which is also my university. So it's an additional pride to be here and uh, to be given thanks to my, my alma mater. And uh, so all of you, thank you again. Thank to all my colleagues, uh, international, national, regional. Uh, it's truly, again, a pleasure. And uh, I wish you a good night. Thank you very much.